that very many that would hear this message have ever heard it presented in this way. Uh, I doubt it's very likely that many who would hear this message have never heard a preacher present it in this fashion. But the Lord gave this to me. I, I, you know, I seek God for my messages. I don't just get up and preach, and I don't just pull something out of a hat, and I don't <clears throat> preach from a sermon book. I never have in all the years that I've been preaching. I have never one time mm -hmm. preached a message out of a sermon book. I always go before the Lord and say, Lord, what will you have me to preach for this hour? And whether there be few or many, it doesn't matter because there's something God wants to say to us. That's right. And us is not only those of us in this room, but those that would hear this message by tape, That's those right. that might see this on video in the future, those that might hear this message one day on the Internet, all of us that one day will hear these words, I believe tonight you're going to hear from God. Amen. Mark Amen. chapter 8. The gospel of Jesus Christ as recorded by the apostle Mark chapter 8, beginning at verse 34. We're only going to read through verse 38, standing in honor of the reading of God's word. Mark chapter 8, verses 34 through 38. The King James reads, And when he had called the people unto him, with his disciples also, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself, and take up his cross, and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, but whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospel's, the same shall save it. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Master, we thank you, God, for your word tonight, for your word is exalted above all else. King Jesus, as we would desire, God, to present the message that you laid on my heart for this time, Lord, I would just ask that your presence and your power and your anointing would reside upon me. As the Apostle Paul said, I did not come to you with the enticing words of man's wisdom, but rather in the power and in the display of the Holy Ghost. God, this hour, use these feeble, humble lips of clay to convey some thought that might inspire the people of God. Lord, help me to say something that might help somebody to want to serve you till the day they die. Lord, that they might be saved and be part of the glorious reunion that one day will take place in the air. Master, tonight we pray and we ask all this in the wonderful name of our Lord and King, Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God and amen. You may be seated tonight. The price of a soul. In our text tonight, you'll notice that the Lord was talking to his disciples as well as to a group of people. And he was talking to them about the price of a soul. He said, for what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? He said, what, what good would it be to you if you wound up with everything, mm -hmm. but you lost your, sal your salvation, you didn't have eternity? Mm -hmm. He said, what good would that be? What, you know, what value would there be in that? Mm -hmm. Is that a fair exchange? He said, or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? What is the price of a soul? What is the price? What is the cost? What is the value of an individual soul tonight? I think you're going to be surprised as I continue with this tonight to learn how God values the soul of man. Many focus when reading this text on the Lord's suggestion that there is a price for which a human being would be willing to exchange their soul and their soul salvation. 
He clearly states that even if one were to gain the entire world and lose their soul, what would he or she have gained in the end? But the real question today is not so much what price tag would we attach on our own souls, but rather the question tonight should be, what price did God himself pay to attain our soul? While the Lord said it would be a waste to gain the entire world while losing one's own soul, the reality is that God himself gave up the whole world in order to attain our souls, in order to attain our love and our respect and our admiration. The Bible tells us in Matthew 4, verses 8 through 10, again the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and saith unto him, all these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Amen. Children, tonight from the beginning of time, this earth was created for the pleasure of mankind. Mm -hmm. Are you hearing me tonight? Even the term Eden... The Garden of Eden, even the term Eden from the Hebrew translates pleasures. It was the Garden of Pleasures. The Bible said every tree that Adam looked, to, looked at was pleasant to the eye. Everywhere he looked was pleasant. It was pleasurable. It was positive. Uh, everywhere he looked, there was nothing that was interested in harming him. There was nothing that was interested in, in doing him any harm. Because it's a garden of pleasures. God had created the entirety of the earth for the pleasure of humanity. God, the Bible says, has created all things for himself, but his pleasure is in watching us enjoy yes, his wondrous creation. Have you ever gone with a little child somewhere like the Grand Canyon or to the zoo and seen the look on their face as they're just marveling at this beautiful animal or they're just marveling at the, how funny the monkeys are when they're behaving a certain way or they're just marveling at how deep and how mighty this canyon is? And you're, that's your baby, and you're looking down at that child, or that's your niece or your nephew, and you're looking at that child, and there's such a pleasure, there's such a sense of joy that comes over you as you watch your offspring enjoy this sight. That's God's joy tonight. When he created the Garden of Eden, all, everything that was created from the stars in the sky to the clouds in the sky to the whales in the oceans to the beaches, to the rivers, to the fish, to the animals, to the trees, to the flowers, every bit of it God created for Adam. My Lord have mercy. And then he sat back and just thrilled Mm -hmm. to watch Adam look at everything mm -hmm. like a little child with mm -hmm. such excitement and thrill. Yes, Why, yes. look at that beautiful animal. Look at that. And can you imagine Adam in the Garden of Eden before the fall, before evil was introduced to the world? See, Adam opened the door to the knowledge of good and evil. Yes, amen. And... Uh, Prior to that, you see, Adam could be standing there in the garden, and here comes Mr. Lion. Mm -hmm. And Adam could say, well, good morning, Mr. Lion. How are you? Mm -hmm. And I personally believe with all my heart that Mr. Lion, he does not have vocal cords to speak as we do as human beings. Yeah. But I believe that considering 90% of the human brain isn't even used today, mm -hmm. 
I believe there's a capacity there in the spirit realm. Yes, and in, in Adam's pre-fallen state, I believe there was a capacity there for him to communicate with these animals. How right, else could right. Eve have spoken with a serpent? Right, that's right, amen. So there had to be a means whereby they could communicate somehow, some way. Yes, yes. He'd probably just look at him and think the thought, and the lion would look at him and think the thought back. I'm all right today, Adam. How are you? <laughs> Amen. But can you imagine the thrill Amen. and the excitement of being able to step up beside a, a two-ton pachyderm yeah. and say, good morning, Mr. Elephant, and him look at you and say, good morning, Adam. Yes, Amen. And how are you today? What an exciting thing. But see, all those things were put there for Adam's pleasure. All those things were put there for Adam's enjoyment. The Bible says in 1 Timothy 6.17, Charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded, nor trust in earth uncertain riches, but in the living God, who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. That's right, amen. God's given us all things right. mm -hmm. to enjoy. And you know, we often say the old yes. saying, the best things in life are free. Yes, amen. John chapter 10, 10 and 11, the Lord said, The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd, the good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. The earth was created by God, yes, but it was really created for us. Yes, amen. God doesn't need the earth. No, he doesn't. The earth serves him no purpose. In Genesis 1:26, the word of the Lord says, And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion. Listen, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth Amen. and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So from the beginning, all these things have been created for the benefit and enjoyment of humanity. Are you following my line of reasoning tonight? The word dominion in the Hebrew means to rule, have dominion, dominate, tread down, to have dominion, rule, subjugate, or to cause, to dominate. There are many of us who try, or excuse me, who spend our lives trying to collect as much of this world's treasures as we can, often to the neglecting of our own soul salvation. But God was willing to pass on his entire creation, if it meant in doing so that he could redeem us, his most valuable possession. Amen. I'm gonna, in a minute, I'm gonna give you a, a visual aid, or I'm gonna kind of paint a visual picture to help you understand what I'm saying. You know, the hopeless romantic will often say to his or her lover, I haven't heard this in a number of years, but it's a sweet thought when it is verbalized. Mm -hmm. I could live in a ditch beside the road just so long as you were with me. Mm -hmm. That's the mentality of a hopeless romantic. Mm -hmm. They're so in love with that person that it, I don't care if I'm living in a cardboard box, as long as you're there, mm -hmm. I'll be happy. Well, you know, it's interesting because today the Lord has declared, I would forfeit all of creation from the heavenly bodies that shine brightly at night to the massive oceans which cover two-thirds the earth's surface just so long as in the end I could have the object of my love and devotion. And that's us. When our Creator became a man so that He could redeem us back to Himself, He literally became a part of His own creation mm -hmm, that's right. so that He could personally 
and literally say, thank you, but no. <laughs> I'm just, I'm covered with goosebumps right yeah. now, just thinking about this. Thank you, but no. Devil, you've shown me every kingdom. You've shown me the wealth of the world. You said it could be mine if I would take the shortcut and bow down and worship you. But thank you, no. I'd rather have Donna. I'd rather have Charles. I'd rather have Tommy than all the remainder of that which I created. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 through 21. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new, and all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit, in other words, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world, are you hearing me? The world unto himself. I want you to think about that for a minute. We read the verse in John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. The world, the world. The world, Calvary was not just to buy my soul, it was also to save the world. Because had God not done what he did, we would have destroyed this thing. Humanity would have destroyed the earth. The Bible said, except the days be shortened, there would no flesh be saved. We would totally and utterly annihilate ourselves and destroy this entire planet yeah. if it weren't for Calvary. That's right. Amen. But God needed to save not just the people Mom, who would believe on him, yeah. but he needed to save the world that he had created. Wow. Because he created the world for them. That's right. Yeah, mm -hmm. oh, now listen to me tonight. We were created to be a love interest. We were created to be an object of affection. The plants and structures which fill a fish aquarium are only there for the pleasure of the fish. No one decorates an aquarium and then leaves it empty. In other words, they don't put any fish in it. The true object of an aquarium owner's affections are his or her fish. Mm -hmm. Now, you all know I have an aquarium, and I love my fish. I love my fish. And I put those little, you know, those little plastic things in there that look like little mountains and little rock formations and little this and little that. Because I'm just imagining my little fish are going to have a time going in through there, and they're going to enjoy it, you know, and it's going to... Yeah, it makes the... It makes the the aquarium look prettier, but in terms of functionality, the only one who's going to enjoy it is the fish. <laughs> Amen. I'm not getting anything out of it. <laughs> <laughs> All of creation <laughs> lost when Adam disobeyed God in the garden of pleasures, in the garden of Eden. Not just the human family, but all of that which was created for the human family to enjoy. Prior to the fall, the lion and the lamb were able to walk side by side, and the serpent and man were friends. Prior to the fall, there were no thorns upon which to prick your fingers. Uh huh. Prior to the fall, it was a garden of pleasures. Everywhere you turned, everything you did was pleasant and pleasurable. And God created this for humanity. But when man disobeyed God, the nature of the world changed. Because the nature of man changed. 
And when man's nature changed, all of a sudden God said, Now, now you're going to have to deal with prickers. Now you're going to have to deal with stones in the soil as you're trying to plant your fields. Now you're going to have to deal with things that aren't so pleasant. Because the entire nature of the earth had changed, all because of Adam's decision. That's right. But Jesus Christ came not just to save us, but to save the world. I want you to know today, the prize to be won on the cross of Calvary was the entire world, not just humanity. During the Lord's temptation in the wilderness, Satan tried to offer him a shortcut. But I want you to know sometimes we need to take the long and more difficult road, no matter how much our human nature may desire to take an easier path. Amen. Shortcuts only lead to short-lived victory. Satan offered the master all the kingdoms and riches of the world, but it was only by reason of his enduring the cross that the Lord would genuinely be able to claim not just the aquarium, plants, <laughs> and fixtures, and all, but also the fish Amen. for whom he had originally created that aquarium. Amen. Satan could not offer the Lord the souls of humanity, Listen to this now. He could only offer the material wealth and possessions of this earth. That's right. Why could he not offer the souls of humanity? I'll tell you why. The souls of mankind were not his to give. That's right. Amen. For God had so ordained and designed and designated that humanity could only belong to the one whom they gave themselves. God designed it that we as human beings could only belong to whomever we gave ourselves. That's why the Bible said if you serve sin, then you're, ser you're sin servant indeed. If you're going to serve the devil, you're, then you belong to the devil. Then you're giving yourself to the You wonder why people don't spend eternity in hell. That's why. Because if you want to be married to that fool, then you, honey, you're going to spend your time with him. But God designed that humanity had the choice and had the option. Adam made the wrong choice. Jesus came and became the second Adam and made the right choice for all of us and reversed the entire process. And all we have to do is believe and accept it and obey it and buy into that gospel and we become part of the reversal of the process until the day when the Bible says we have what? A new heaven and a new earth. Amen. Because the former things are passed away. Why are the former things passed away? Because the former things are the byproduct of Adam's fall. So God has to redo it to bring it back to its original state. The way he made it for us to begin with. Amen. Hallelujah. I hope you're getting something out of this Amen. tonight. <sighs> if the Lord could see the plan through Calvary and into Easter or Resurrection morning, then he would have courted his love interest and expressed his deepest devotion in the most demonstrative and undeniable of ways. He didn't have to do all that in order to get the world back and to redeem the world. He didn't have to, but he did. And the reason that he did was he could have gotten everything back but us without Calvary. But he didn't want everything else but us. He wanted everything plus us. Hallelujah. Wow. And 
he says, what shall it profit a man if he gained the whole world? See, the Lord knew what he was talking about because he was just saying, I'm passing on all of it. <laughs> I could come in and get the whole world and it would all be mine and none of you would be around. That's right, amen. But what would be gained? Nothing. Because the price of a man's soul is everything. The price of a man's soul is everything. But here's the ticket. Here's the key. The Word of God teaches that I, you know, that little saying that they have, if you love something, let it go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if it comes back to you, then it's yours forever. Mm -hmm. And it was meant to be. But if it doesn't come back to you, then it was never meant to begin with. It was never yours to begin with. That's right. Amen. And you see, this is exactly what God did in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ came down to earth and he had the opportunity he had the power at his disposal he had everything he needed to take everything back but he said you know what no thank you I'll pass because I know that if I'll pass on it today, mm -hmm. if you love something, let it go. That's right, if I'll pass on it today, then the ones that come back to me will be the ones that are meant for me. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Praise God, amen. Ooh. amen. My Lord, have mercy. Humanity would choose to be with the Lord and not merely choose to cling to the accoutrement of this world, which in the end will only be given to those for whom the Lord has created them, which is his very own elect. 1 Peter 2, 6 through 11, wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Unto you, therefore, which believe he is precious. But unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner, and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, which in times past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. And then listen to this very next statement that Peter makes. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims. In other words, you don't belong here. This isn't, this isn't That's right. all your life is about. He said, as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts, which war against the soul. He says, you're just passing through. So abstain from falling after desires for all these things in this world, which war against your soul. I want you to know tonight, children, the Lord himself has established the price of our souls. The world for a soul. But that exchange is only reasonable and fair when our God and Creator is paying it. We could gain the whole world and still want, die lost without God. That's right. But God has given the entire world so that throughout eternal ages to come, he might enjoy with you and I a loving relationship earned, not demanded. So you hear preachers, they always preach like God demands you love him. No, God does not demand you love him. You love something, let it go. The Lord says, no, I went to Calvary to show you how much I love you. When your creator was willing to take on human form and die 
and sit in a grave for three days and go through that whole divine drama. He said, I was trying to show you how much I loved you. I was willing to endure all that. I was willing to go through that experience. I was willing to go through the pain. I was willing to go through the emotional torment of that entire experience. Why? Because I love you. I'm courting you. Some men send flowers and others buy candy. God goes to Calvary and says, this is how much I love you. Will you love me in return? Will you love me back? The devil said that he'd give me everything that was his to give. And I could have spared myself, Calvary. But you know what? I wouldn't have gotten you if I had taken that route. He'd have gotten you. And you know, I love you too much, so I still followed through. Who, despising the shame, the Bible says, endured the cross, despising the shame. He endured it because the Bible says, Who, for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame. Because he looked ahead of time and he said, Right now I'm letting all of this go. I created all of this. John chapter 1 said he was in the world and he created the world and the world knew him not. Here he was, I created all this. At any moment in time, mm -hmm. I could just take it back right. and it would be mine. Mm -hmm. I could force humanity into subjugation. I could force humanity to serve me. But I'm not going to do that. Mm -hmm. Because that's not why I put Adam in the garden to begin with. Mm -hmm. I put Adam in the garden because I wanted someone to love me by choice. Everybody gets so carried away. Why did God create man? Why did God do this? Why did God? It's so easy, folks. It's not even funny. God wanted someone who would love him and serve him by choice. It was that easy. The angels were created to serve. They had no choice. That's their design. That's, that's what they're made to do. But God created humanity so that we would have a choice. And we could choose to whom we belong. And he went to Calvary to show us the depth of his love, hoping that we would make the choice in the process of his letting this whole world go, that we, those of us that would believe, would come back to him and cling to him and love him in return. Amen. You understand what I'm saying tonight? Amen. First John 3, 1 through 11. Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not. See, all of a sudden we become strangers to the world, to all of this. We become strangers to every bit of it. Just as Adam who had a different nature than everything else around him. You're following me now? All of a sudden, we become strangers to the entirety of the world because we're different now. Our nature has changed. We're called the sons of God. Even though we haven't yet become everything that we're going to be, we're still called the sons of God now. What manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God, therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. It did, the world didn't even recognize its own creator. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is. Amen. amen. Praise God and amen. What's the price of a soul tonight? Well, from our standpoint, it's priceless. Mm -hmm. As human beings, you cannot attach a price. There's nothing that's worth exchanging for our soul. But from God's standpoint, what is the price of a soul? 
everything. And don't hold anything back. Put every star in the sky, put every cloud, put every bird, put every whale in the ocean, every dolphin, put in every deer, put in every, uh, every cattle, put in every tree, every flower, every field, every blade of grass, everything. God said, was the price of a soul. I'll let it all go if I can have you love me by choice. Praise the Lord. Stand up with me tonight.